Hello friends and welcome back to the Bordeaux show, our outing in the beautiful Greece, Athens. And last video I talked about geographical claims of Georgian and Gaugasian being part of Europe. And now I want to talk about more interesting historical aspects. Of course, we're, we're better to talk about it. Athens historical marketplace where the ideals of democracy was founded. And of course, my colleague's temple here, Hephaestus' uh, temple is shown. And there you can see Acropolis, beautiful Acropolis. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't allow us to film inside, but we can film whatever we want here. All right, let's talk about history. First, before history, let's talk about mythology. In mythology, Europa was a princess of a Phoenician kingdom that was kidnapped by Zeus, who turned into a beautiful bull and took her to the island of Crete, where, as you know, the ancient civilization of Minoan uh, Greeks existed before Hellenistic uh, Greeks came along, and she gave birth to King Minos, who later married princess of Colchis, mother-day Georgia, Basipaia, who uh, was a sister of Colchian king Aetis and aunt to Medea. Of course, speaking of Medea, later Hellenistic Greeks, you of course know of Jason and the Argonauts. Jason went into uh, Colchis to kidnap uh, our beautiful Medea and of course Golden Fleece. And even in that myth, we see the idea of uh, Western chauvinism, uh, let's just say that, where Jason, who was portrayed as a negative character at that point, where called Medea a barbarian uh, and uh, chastised her for not enjoying living in uh, Greek city-states, while in reality, even in, by the myth standards, culture and capital and cultures was portrayed as far more advanced and far more powerful kingdom with uh, magic uh, uh, robot bulls and uh, robot soldiers and, and springs that sprouted wine and water and hot water. After, well, if we leave mythology behind, uh, in history, of course, what we consider European uh, foundation is Greco-Roman colonies, that Rome, Roman civilization went around and colonized most of southern and central Europe, and from that sprouted all the countries of Europe that we know today. Of course, there were also Greek and Roman colonies in uh, Caucasus and southern Caucasus, uh, but more Caucasian states such as Colchis, Iberia, and the later Armenian states had more diplomatic and, of course, yes, uh, Rome and Greece were more powerful states back then, but we had more like diplomatic relationship of less powerful but still respectable non-barbarian. We were not considered as part of barbarian society, we were considered as civilized folk. And uh, one of the greatest examples of that is story of Georgian or Iberian king, uh, Parsman II, uh, having a joking rivalry with Roman emperors. That uh, It's a long story that I will tell in the future. The story ends with our Georgian or Iberian king statue being built in the capital, Rome. And you can imagine what kind of a symbol that sends that non-Roman uh, statue is built in the center of uh, Roman civilization. But uh, continuing with history, later, of course, uh, Georgia and Armenia were first kingdoms to recognize and adopt Christianity. And uh, through Byzantian history, uh, we had much more closer relationship as the capital and cent center heart of Europe came from Rome to uh, Constantinople. And Byzantium was the continuation of Roman Empire. And of course, we all know the history of Byzantium and how much Armenian uh, influence was there in the military and uh, royal families. And of course, Georgian kings and queens intermarried with Byzantine rulers as well. And many Georgian kings also served in their army and had the title of Korapalat. But one of the greatest examples of this I want to mention is that after the heyday of uh, Byzantium, Georgian King Tamar, she re-established kingdom of Pontus and royal family of Komnenos, her nephews as rulers there, and Byzantian rulers became under her protection. And that is really uh, a f funny twist of history where uh, Georgia was considered as uh, under, hello, Kiri, 
uh, under uh, Byzantian protection. Of course, unfortunately, later on Byzantium falls and our connection to Europe gets cut up for 500 years. The European ideals of democracy that was founded right here continues. Greek and Roman ideals of beauty and history and culture gets refurbished and renaissance, if you will, in the Western Europe. Of course, enlightenment comes and new ideals of European. Europeanism comes back. But uh, it, of course, comes back with the same chauvinism that uh, Greeks and Romans said that Oh, what is true Europe and what are true Europeans, even Central and Eastern Europeans were considered true Europeans. Oh, when, for example, European Union was building the idea that was a Greek meant to join European Union was up for question for a while. But of course, Greek, uh, Greece was let in. Now the debate that is Georgia culturally and uh, historically and other, of course, Armenia and Azerbaijan, are they a part of European history and culture and civilization? I think I've demonstrated that yes, yes we are, at least historically, and later videos we'll talk about culturally and ethnically. Are we a part of Europe? Thank you for watching, subscribe, and wait for next videos. Goodbye.